Hello everyone, and welcome back to another Southern California Seismic Data video. Today, we have an extremely large 6.5 earthquake to strike in the dead s near the dead center of Idaho. And here, let me go back here for a second. Oh, wrong one. You see, I'm just like in awe because like first we had like 5.0s on both sides of California. Then we had a 5.7 in Salt Lake City. And now we just have a 6.5 in Utah. Here, here goes the globe and close this now. Which is probably the biggest quake to hit Utah in, in an extremely long time. So, yeah, I'm, I'm really not sure how to react to this. Sorry if I'm, like, stuttering or, like, not enthusiastic in this video. Oh, yeah, also up here, CA Seismograph. You can see their readings here as well. I'll put their channel link in the description. Feel free to check them out. They're really cool. So yeah, here you can see here 6,300 felt reports and shaking felt all the way to like Utah. It's all the way up here to deep into Montana. Oh wait, no, that's a river. My bad. But still into Montana, Washington, Oregon. Not sure if it was felt in Wyoming, but it might have been. It's just crazy. Okay, and let's pull this up on Google Earth. See if we can find which fault it occurred on. Oh, Google is open. Don't want you yet. Okay, faults. Let's see. Don't see any. Oh, here it is. This might have occurred on the Sawtooth Fault. Could have been something else, maybe even an undiscovered fault, but who knows. Alright, let's see how far this was from our seismometers. Okay, about 751 miles. That's pretty far. And if you look on our infill tech here, no second to load, just ma massive off the chart readings in Menifee, Mammoth, and Camarillo. And oh, whoops. See, still off the chart for a very long time. And it starts to fade out in Camarillo, but it's still, the shaking stays strong in Menifee and Mammoth. And that might have been an aftershock, who knows. And it's still going strong in Mammoth. It kind of faded out in Menifee. Uh, All right, and on to this, our raspberry shake. I let the data load. It's probably going to be kind of slow. I don't know why it's been slow recently. Oh yeah, here, I'm checking my phone right now. And there was an eight minutes ago. I think that's where that occurred. Actually, no, that was a bit recent. There was a 4.8 aftershock. Okay, so yeah, you can see here. Again, uh, readings that are huge, the, and this is just the P wave, and then we get into the S wave, which are just these, like, mm, oh gosh, it's being slow, like, these massive readings, like, spread out, but they're still, like, strong, because if you look here, where my mouse is, it's red, which that means, that signifies, like, massive shaking, and the thing about this that, like, is just, the most jaw-dropping is that the rings are like this, and I'm all the way in Southern California, which is where, you know, it doesn't usually, it, it doesn't seem like the readings should be this large, but yet they still last for this long, and they're still that large. It's just insane. Maybe there goes the globe. Oh, wait, no. That is see a seismograph stream. I want to close them real quickly. And yeah, let's check this out on the spectrogram. Uh, you can see here, it's like already dark colored, but low, um, pretty far away, so it has a low frequency. And goes on. And then when you hit the S wave, it's just you get this really, really dark color. I really don't know how to react to this. Like, usually, 
it's just not something that happens every day. I'm just leave it at that. Okay, you can still see Sean shaking. It goes on for a while and fades out. You can see here P wave, S wave goes on and fades out. All right, so that's gonna wrap it up for this video. I hope you guys have a good day, night, whatever time it is for you. Uh, remember to be prepared if you're in an earthquake prone zone, even if you're not, such as Idaho or Utah or anywhere. <laughs> And also be pre be prepared, self-isolate for, you know, what's going on. And I will see you guys again in the next video.